today I'm gonna show you how to diagnose and uh, repair or replace the air injection system. Uh, I got the code P0491, P0492, which is respectively for the air injection system, bank one and bank two. And uh, the easiest thing to do right now is to just remove the hose here and there should be air coming out. So we're gonna put a piece of paper just right after the uh, air pump and uh, the secondary air pump. And then we're gonna see the piece of paper to move this way because there is air coming out with quite a pressure from the pump here. So we'll start the car and uh, we'll see if there is air coming out then the pump is right is okay and then we go and go to the and check the valve the egr valve and from there the vacuum uh, system okay but first, first we're gonna see if we have power coming to the you guys saw the air was moving from there so we don't have air coming out of the pump so that means we have a bad electrical connection so that is the one that we're gonna be checking next or might be the relay inside the car which is uh, on your glove compartment we're gonna it's one here one there and one back here all you need for this job is uh, a screwdriver flat headed and a 10 millimeter with probably an extension because it's kind of deep there okay and there we have the connector so the connector here is a push tab pin you push the pin here and then you pull out there are these two pins that you push and then you pull out and there we have those two uh, plugs that we're gonna be testing if there is uh, power coming to that so for that we're gonna have to turn the car on again and uh, always remember you have to do this uh, in uh, the morning in the cold start because the secondary air inje injection system works only for a minute and 30 seconds and after that you're not gonna be able to see power coming through the plug here so that's why make sure you do this when the car is cold let's test it in a second So you guys saw that we have power coming to the outlet here, which is a good sign because that means that uh, our relay is working great. But anyways, I'm gonna go and uh, remove the relay and show you how to check the relay afterward. After that, if the relay was the problem, but right now we know that uh, our problem is the pump. We're still gonna go and check the EGR valve and the. Uh, a vacuum system there because when the pump goes bad something has uh, like most of the cases something has pushed or has uh, affected the pump to go bad so we're gonna open the EGR valve as well to check it out okay so this is the old one there we have the new pump uh, I knew about my pump because I have inspected it before diagnosed my problem but I just went and uh, redid the process backwards to show you guys how you can diagnose and fix it yourself I know a lot of people out there have just replaced the uh, or removed actually delete the air pump the secondary air pump and then just put a backing plate on the EGR okay, that to be too much and 
put a backing plate on the EGR valve there, but after that you're gonna have to okay, you're gonna have to put a new or adjust or take it to the dealership to work with your uh, ECU because then you're gonna have the check engine light on uh, on your dash, which means you gotta live with that. That's why I went and replaced it, even though where I live it is not uh, like we don't have the emission test here. But I don't like having the check engine light on because then I'm, I'm not able to see what's wrong with my engine if there is something wrong with it. that our pump is working so we put the, the hose back and tighten it back with a screwdriver on. but that is how you sorry guys but that is how you diagnose and uh, replace the secondary air pump and I'm gonna go and show you guys now about the EGR valve and probably clean it with some uh, uh brake cleaner okay, guys so the relay is located uh, behind the glove box on the passenger side and uh, the only thing you need to take the glove box off the car is a phillips screwdriver there are only five or six uh, screws so there is one here two three and then there is one right there, four, one is under here, five, and one on the other side, six. So only six Phillips screws. Start taking them off. And then the last screw. There it is. And then just pull it. just drops okay there and then there you can see the orange one is the relay we are looking for so we're gonna take it off from there and then we're gonna be testing it to see if it's good I know mine is good but I'm gonna show you how you test it okay so it's only a few you just pull it, it comes right out it's hard. Uh, I'll try to pry it out with the screwdriver. Okay. There. Okay, one clip is off. Is another one on top. Okay, there it is. And off it comes. Okay, so here you guys can see there are the, some numbers on each pin. There is 30 on the top one, uh, 85 on the bottom, and there are two 87s. 87A is the middle one and the one on the right is 87 just 87 and 86 is the left one and there is a diagram on the side that shows you which one is which and what function they do so the number 85 and 86 are the ones that get the power so we're gonna put the 12 volt coming from the outlet there uh, attached to the 85 and the 86 
and then we're gonna check uh, the uh, resistance on the uh, 30 and then uh, 87 and 87 a so we'll get to that in a second I'm just gonna set the uh, power source okay guys so there it is I've connected the ground and the 80 on the 86 and the 85 is this pin right here so the first uh, indicator is a uh, tic tac noise from the relay when you give the give a source so there you can hear and if you hear the source then uh, it is not the the best indicator to tell you that the relay is good but it is one of the indicators and that's why we have this uh, multimeter here to see once we attach the source then we're going to check the one pin on the 30 and then the other pin of the multimeter doesn't matter which one on the 87 and 87 a so we'll check the 87 uh, the 30 and 87 87 a before we give it the source so you have the idea that there is still uh, which one of them is connected right now and uh, it when you give a source it attaches to the other one so as you can I'll, I'll explain it better here okay on the uh, diagram here you see when you give power to the 85 and 86 then the 30 and uh, I believe 87 a is attached as soon as you give power the 87 attaches so this small uh, pin here goes from the 87 to the 87 uh, from the 87 a to the 87 okay let's uh, we'll keep it this way a mess here okay so I'll attach the ground to the 30 and then the 87 a okay, it's my other hand okay so okay now you guys can see the 87 a is the one in the middle and 87 is the one on the right so we'll see what the multimeter is going to tell us what the reading is going to be okay it's kind of hard to work with on hand but we'll try it okay there's the multimeter i'm gonna attach this to the 87 first okay we'll put this on the resistance and right now you can see the resistance doesn't show anything if I attach it to the 87A it becomes zero but so there it is 87A and that is the reading and if I disconnect this and connect the 87 the reading doesn't change so right now it is connected to the 87A Well, I'm gonna connect the power here and then power source and I'll show you guys 86 doesn't show anything and so then... if uh, everything works fine like from the beginning everything is fine with the secondary air pump then your problem is from here from the check valve or the EGR valve to the control valve which is right back there somewhere so you're gonna have to take this piece off anyway so uh, the way you check the uh, EGR valve you attach a vacuum line here and then you apply vacuum to that and if that doesn't hold vacuum then which I've already made ready and if that doesn't hold uh, vacuum then you know that your problem is the check valve or the EGR valve so let's check this I'm gonna apply 15 hg pressure and it should hold because I know 
Okay, I shouldn't move my hand there because it's not secure down there. But anyways, I know my EGR valve is fine, is in good condition. So, okay, there. And uh, anyways, I'm gonna take it out sometime and then clean it because of course I have another, like something caused my uh, vacuum, the secondary air pump to go bad. And I do believe is the uh, EGR valve might be dirty. So I'm gonna remove it one day and then show you guys how you can clean that and uh, put it back in. But I know it's good because it is uh, holding vacuum. Even though it is dropping right now, it's because the connection down there is not secure. As you can see, sorry. As you can see. Anyways, so if that checks good, then your problem is between the vacuum line, which staying around the engine, it's gonna go bad sometime and mine is just one second okay there mine is getting bad so I might replace this piece here and then there is a uh, PCV hose back there that goes around the engine but of course that uh, goes bad with time as well and if none of them up to here is not your problem then the only thing that might be wrong is the uh, control valve that is back there but I do believe that uh, it is not the same uh, code for uh, any of these components of the secondary air system so for the P0491 P0492 the problem is from here uh, the connection the electrical connection okay, I don't know why it is not focusing okay, there the electrical connection that is that is underneath the uh, secondary pump and the relay that uh, I showed you guys how to check okay thanks for watching guys and if you find this video helpful uh, please give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing.